Hey guys, welcome to this beginner video uh, intended for people to learn how to use UVs uh, in Nuke and just kind of what a UV pass is, uh, a little bit about UVs in general, and then um, you know some of the practical ways that we can actually use them. So this is, again, this is a be beginner video. I'm intending to make an intermediate video and then an advanced video about UVs because it's a pretty in-depth topic and there's all kinds of stuff you can do uh, with uh, STMAP and uh, UVs in general on 3D objects and uh, as a compositor. So there's some creative ways we can use those in the future, but this is more of a be beginner video. I've split it into basically uh, two parts. One goes into Maya explaining UVs and then the second part will go into Nuke and check out some of this stuff. Um, so if you guys want the project file, it's in the description below for free. And you can download, there's a couple assets that come with it so you can actually play around um, and follow along if you want. Um, in terms of using some of these images here. And I've also provided one of the, uh, I've provided this car render for free, just one frame of it from my full Nuke 303 class. Uh, and it comes with the UV pass as well, so you can actually um, use this and uh, learn the technique. So without further ado, uh, we'll get into the tutorial. So for the first portion that we're looking at here, it's really just uh, the fundamentals of uh, CG. Um, very much so the basics, but I just want to cover this part in case some people don't have a 3D background. Some compositors actually have no 3D background, um, but I really highly recommend that you you know, know some 3D as a compositor as it's going to give you a really big advantage and you're going to understand where things are coming from when you're working in Nuke. Um, so I really recommend you get into Maya or Blender or uh, one of the other 3D softwares uh, that are widely used and understand these concepts. So we're just going to briefly cover this in Maya uh, as this is an easy way to explain what UVs are. Um, and then we're going to go into more uh, about what we can do with them in Nuke and why they're relevant to us as compositors. So uh, the basics of UVs uh, is very simple. Uh, so you have this texture that's uh, wrapped onto this cube here. And essentially what you're doing is you're wrapping uh, a 2D image onto a 3D model. So essentially what you have to do is take a 3D model and you need to unwrap it. So this is the unwrapped model. So you can see if you imagine like a piece of paper, you know, if you were to cut this cube up uh, and flatten it, um, this over here on the right is essentially what that is. It's just, a, it's just a flat version of the model. And if I turn on the texture view, we can see that we're mapping this, this uh, kind of colorful checkerboard texture onto this model. And if we hit this button here and I select one of the faces, you'll see that uh, this face here, when I'm selecting the top of the cube, is actually highlighting this specific square. So we know that that uh, texture here, so you can see the numbers 8, 1, 1, 2, are being mapped onto the top of that cube. So we're essentially just taking a 2D picture, putting it on, on there. Um, of course, you can manipulate UVs if you're in a 3D software. Um, so you can grab this UV and I can move it around and it's not going to change the geometry. It's only mapping, or it's only changing the way this 2D texture is being mapped onto that uh, geometry. So we can slide that around and now you see that the top here is 2334. Uh, two, and also what you notice is that the side here is a bit stretched and diagonal. Um, and that's because you can see if we turn off the view, you can see that these lines are diagonal. So we're trying to map uh, straight a straight image onto a, a warped uh, UV. So that's kind of a problematic area. So that's not how you'd want to map your UVs. You'd want to make it so uh, the lines flow the correct direction. So that's essentially what UVs are. Um, and so when you're getting a UV pass in Nuke, you're essentially getting uh, this um, layout, this kind of layout, and you can remap a new texture uh, in Nuke uh, onto this layout. So if I have these cubes like this, I can, you know, put a different texture and it's going to wrap onto the different sides of the cube uh, without going back into 3D. And so the reason for this is because you can save time in production. And if you want to change or add some texture to CG that has already been rendered, you can just do it quickly in post-production and you don't need to uh, re-render or go re-light anything. You can actually just uh, do it in Nuke. So that's the reason we want to talk about UVs. And now we'll start to get into, you know, what other things we can do with UVs, um, and just a couple examples uh, on going over it. So as we covered in the previous section, um, this is kind of the same concept, and we're just looking at this inside of Nuke now. So I've kind of just laid it out uh, on top here as the 2D view, and then we have the 3D object underneath. 
So on the left side here, we have the unwrapped cube. So this is brought in from Maya, uh, this cube. And the cube is unwrapped like so. So we can see the 2D layout and we can see the numbers on here. So for example, that uh, again, that top face, uh, we have the numbers 8112. Um, and we can see those on the top here. And, and just to remind you guys, this picture with all the numbers, that's just for referencing where things are on the cube. It doesn't mean, all these numbers, they don't mean something special. It's just, uh, it's just a reference texture. Um, so we can see that that's wrapped around the object here. And on the right here, we have one uh, that's called a normalized uh, UV uh, layout, which means every single face is mapped uh, basically over the same image. So all of them are mapped exactly the same way. So if we change the image here, it's going to change all the sides exactly the same. So it's not wrapping around really. They're all all of the faces are exactly the same. Um, so that's a little bit less useful, but this is actually important to know because by default, Nuke is actually doing this um, with the default cube. It's creating this uh, norm. It's called a normalized uh, UV layout. So uh, again, so this is kind of uh, when I keep saying U and V, this is what this is referring to. Uh, it's just an X and Y uh, representation. So an X and Y coordinates uh, of a 2D image. Um, and the reason we don't use X and Y, we use the letters U and V, is just because in 3D we're already using the term X, Y, and Z uh, pretty frequently, so it's just confusing to have the same letters. Um, so U is horizontal and V is that vertical um, uh, line here. So that's UVs, but now when we only want to talk about uh, UV uh, renders. So we can actually render out a special image. So if we go down here, this is a cube that's been rendered. So we just have a cube with a basic texture on it. And we also have uh, a cube, the same cube, uh, with this special image. And these images are, uh, I'm gonna get into it more in the intermediate video on, on how we can actually create these um, special uh, ramps. So these gradient ramps are basically telling Nuke um, the 3D coordinate system, even though you don't have a 3D model anymore. So this is a 2D image rendered from a 3D object. So we only have 2D images, uh, but this one is special. So we can basically use this to uh, wrap textures around the 3D model without having to actually load the 3D model into Nuke. So I don't need to actually go and load and bring the entire model in from Maya. So if this was a character or something more complicated, we don't need to bring in the character uh, model. We just need to have a 2D render of the UV uh, pass here. And so with this UV pass, uh, if we plug it into an ST map node, we can switch the ST map to uh, switch it to RGB. And essentially what that does, and the reason we switch it to RGB is because this is saved in the red, green, and blue channel. So we can see we're in the normal uh, layer here, uh, which is the red, green, and blue. Uh, and if we switch from red and green, we can see there's some kind of information in, in these gradients. And so by setting that to RGB, uh, and plugging in a source, which is another picture, um, it will wrap around that object. So you see uh, we have a picture, a 2D picture of some vines here. And when I plug it through the ST map, it's wrapping uh, around that 3D cube uh, without having a 3D model involved. It's just using 2D. So this is a basically just a 2D trick and we can retexture 3D objects um, very quickly without having to render them. So um, I can move this texture around. If I go to here, I switch the uh, transform. You see, I can move these vines instantly and I'm not doing any kind of uh, re-rendering or anything like that. Um, it's just a cheat basically. And then we have down here just some lighting so we can multiply some lighting on there. And that's just a simple example of UVs. So you're like, well, why wouldn't we just, you know, take the, the vines and render these in CG. And probably you would with vines because um, you're going to get better looking vines and maybe a 2D image. But there are certain aspects that you, you might want to do it in, in compositing, uh, such as uh, if you're going to simulate water running down this cube, that's going to be an expensive thing to do. And it's going to take you a lot of time. Whereas if this is far enough away from the camera, we can take a video of raindrops on glass and then we could just put that on the cube and now it's going to look like the raindrops are running down the cube and we didn't have to go into Houdini or do any kind of advanced uh, simulation. We're basically just saving time and saving money 
So again, that depends on your um, shot. It depends on how far away this thing is from the camera. Um, so if it's a hero shot and you're looking really up close, you're probably going to need some 3D drips. Um, but if it's something that's a little bit further away, we can use 2D tricks like this and uh, save production time. And essentially, uh, that's how you have to always think of things with CG is if you can save time, save money, uh, you know, and uh, it's pretty important to think that way. So uh, this is another example. Um, I've given you guys a free basically frame from my full class, which is the CG compositing class. And some of you guys have probably already taken this class. Um, so this video is a little bit more in depth on the UVs, but uh, you know, we have, this is almost an eight hour class uh, on CG compositing specifically. So yeah, so this is kind of uh, just more on this. So we have a car render, so a beauty, um, and this doesn't have any layers, it's just a JPEG. Uh, and we have a UV render of this car as well. So we also have something called the UV layout, which again, I told you guys about with the cube. But instead of it being a cube, we can see it's just this, this car uh, cut up into uh, pieces and put flat. So we can see all the pieces here. And if we want to put, for example, let's say we want to put uh, a color wheel on the back of this car here. So if you look at the car, let's say I want to put uh, this picture onto the back of this car. Well, I'm going to go here to the UV layout to figure out where to place it. So I go to the UV layout, I look for the piece, and I, I actually unwrapped this car because I modeled it. So uh, this is actually the piece. So I can place that cube. So what I've done is I've taken the cube. I've reformatted it into a square. It's just a bit easier because um, these UV layouts are usually square. Um, so I've, rent, I've reformatted it to being a square as well. And then I've just uh, transformed it. And we can basically just move it around. And I can, oops, I'll grab it here, put it on the back of the bumper. And now if I run it through the ST map, so I plug in the UV render and I plug in the picture that we've just placed and I've used this, I've, you see I'm doing two different things here. I'm using this as reference, like this kind of merge over here. And on the left here, I'm actually doing the, the uh, ST map. So this is just for reference, that's all this is for. Um, so we transform that and we can ST map it and you'll see uh, we get this result where it's folding on the back here. And if I merge that picture, this result from the ST map over the top of our uh, render, we can see uh, that's been placed on the car. And we can, of course, move this around. So I can take the transform, uh, hit, use the up and down arrow keys and slide this around and it's gonna wrap around the CG model. And again, we're just dealing with two 2D images. We have the, the, the beauty render of the car and we have the UV render. So that's pretty cool. Um, so one thing you might be confused about is you look at this thing and you're like, well, I didn't unwrap this model. And if you have a really complex model, you might have a lot more pieces than this. So you're like, well, where do I, you know, how do I, you know, if I want to put a color wheel on the top of this, this tire here, you might be confused when you look at this picture and then you're going to be moving this color wheel everywhere. You're like, well, I don't know which piece is, is the right spot to put it. And that's where this tester material comes in. So that's where uh, that material we've been using. If we plug that in to the ST map, and we just let that go around the car. That's why this material is useful, is because we can see all these colors and they correspond to this picture uh, in this square image. So for example, we see this uh, uh, three here and a four, three and four next to each other. The three is white and the four is pink. So if you look at this thing, where is a three white and a four pink? Well, it's right here. So three and four are right here. And if we go to the corresponding place on our, uh, template, we see that that area is right here. So that's what that's just telling us. It's just telling us where on this thing uh, it's going to land. So three and four. So if I put my color wheel over in that spot in the three and four, and then I plug that into the ST map, you can see that is being wrapped onto the right place. So that's, that's what the tester material is for. It just helps um, if you, if you don't know where to place things and that's one way to do it. There's many ways, um, but yeah, so hopefully that helps out uh, some people. And we can slide it around here and that's how it works. So this is, uh, again, it's 15 bucks if you guys want a full uh, 
CG compositing class, which has a lot more detail than this about different things. Uh, this is one aspect of CG compositing. I'm gonna make another video, more intermediate uh, UV uses. So we're gonna get into more advanced stuff, uh, how we can actually generate these, uh, use expressions to generate these patterns. And eventually uh, after that, I have some plans to do an advanced uh, UV uh, video on YouTube, which is gonna be things that even senior compositors will probably benefit from if you're a senior compositor following this channel. Um, so I kind of have a range of people here, so I'm gonna try to post beginner and intermediate content most of the time and occasionally post, you know, uh, senior level uh, tutorials out here so that people can get uh, use out of it. So if you guys like the video, hit the like button and it helps out a lot and thanks for checking it out.